not hype to say humanity is really waking up right now. Alex Jones here to host the second half of the transmission, taking care of some very important family matters and other issues that the good Lord has uh, again delivered us on once again. It is, of course, Friday, the 24th day of February 2017, and I am so wound up to get in studio and get on air. The mainstream media itself has gotten so incredibly corrupt, five times worse than they were just a few years ago, twice as worse, I'd say, than even during the campaign, that it's completely illustrative of everything I'm talking about. Now, I want to go back to more of the CPAC speech, even though I love to talk, everybody knows that, because I want to finish up with a few of the things that uh, Trump had to say, but everything he's saying is classic Americana, classic Renaissance, classic nationalism, classic power of the people, huge success. It's the model of any prosperous country. And you've not just got CNN, ABC, CBS, Stephen Colbert, and everybody else saying this is totally insane. You've got Glenn Beck on CNN, CBS, ABC, it's everywhere going, it's very dangerous what Trump and Bannon are doing, economic nationalism. We can't run our own affairs. He takes total globalism in our country, totally captured, and selling out to world interest, and says that if we do things that are good for our jobs and our industry, if Americans were to organize as a union, that's what a country's supposed to be as the original union. It has ideas, it has policies, it has beliefs, it has unifying the spiritual uh, systems, cultural systems, and then they have a goal of what that culture wants to be. And normally cultures are known for different things that they strive at and they succeed at. Or they're barbarians. And you've had those throughout history in every sector of the world. They're into murder, deaths, uh, you know, cannibalism, human sacrifice, things like that. Civilization is into art and literature and culture. But the globalists are bringing in a corporate barbatism a, a barbarous system that totally, in a piratical way, wages war against humanity from a psychopathic, cold-blooded perspective. And that's all basically coming to an end because humanity is rediscovering itself right now. But look at these headlines I'm going to cover when we come back. CNN host blames intolerant father for 12-year-old girl not wanting to see a men's penis in the locker room. This has been said by Obama as well. This is Como, who said, you can't read WikiLeaks, only he can People say, well, that sounds crazy. Why would he tweet that and say that? Because they're told to to get you used to sexualizing your children. This is pedophilia. I don't know if him saying it is a promotion of himself. I'm not saying he's one. Oh, certainly not. Uh, no, I'm saying that saying how dare your daughter not want to see a man in the locker room with his penis that you're intolerant. See how that works? Sexualizing your children, it starts with ending genders. They're not having you accept other genders, they're ending them. And all these well-meaning liberals are like, let's be nice to someone thinks they're a dog, or you think you're blind, the state will pay to dump bleach in your eyes, and then we'll pay for all your welfare of the rest of your eyes, uh, of, for, for, of the rest of your lives. This is mental illness. Mental illness, they're imposing as a cultural virus to shut us down. Doesn't mean we hate anybody. In fact, the first rollouts of different things they come out with sometimes are kind of interesting, but it's meant like candy to make you think it's something really good till it sucks you down that vortex. So I don't hate anybody. And of course, humans explore things and do things. They're taking that natural curiosity, all those things that happen as you're an adult, and they twist it when you're a child and tell you you're bad because you're freaked out by a 15-year-old or 16-year-old young man in the women's little girls showers at a public school. Oh, and now you're upset about whiteboards, so all over the country, colleges are removing them. I, you know, I saw that in Michigan two days ago with the university pulling it out and then the, and the Detroit press covering it, mainstream news, straight face. Oh, good, get rid of the load. Somebody might write on it, might hurt someone. That's saying ban books. Ban books so someone might write something hurts your feelings. See? It's the end of culture, the end of language. And then I looked and found it all over the country and also in some areas of Europe, they're getting rid of whiteboards because it might hurt somebody. Somebody might exercise free speech in front of others and that is the ultimate crime. And it gets worse. Glenn Beck, Bannon's economic nationalism agenda is not conservative, it's dangerous. Mainstream media claims nothing juicy in 119 hours of CNN leaks. Of course, there is a bunch. Glenn Beck, Bannon's economic nationalism agenda is not conservative, it's dangerous. Yeah, just saying 
you have a country. The Ninth Circuit banned wearing American flags at school, having American flags on your shirt or on your car because it's hateful. It might hurt someone. First, it's ban the KKK, ban some black racist group. Then it's ban whiteboards, ban brown bags, ban American flags. Then it's take down all the statues. It's the end of language. Then, of course, again, Chris Cuomo, what an embarrassing creature, but he, he thinks he's going to condition you and tell their audience of already Stockholm Syndrome, learned helplessness kooks that, okay, the next thing is you got to let your daughters have, you know, hell, you can have a senior in high school in those showers with your daughter. And if somebody says anything, well, you're a bad person. And, and, and these aren't like cherry-picked examples. It's meant to be extreme. I mean, they had Melissa Harris Perry go on TV two years ago and say, your kids belong to us, and we're getting rid of the family, basically. And as we see the family fall apart, we, 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 we understand they're single parents. We understand communities help. But the point is, that's the good side of it. The bad side of it is it was all engineered. So as we see communities in crisis, and we say this is bad, they go, oh, you hate those communities. No, we don't. Look at this one. Now, this is the biggest one yet, and then I'm going to hit the really big news. Chinese Catholics fear Pope Francis will rat them out to communists now that he's officially merged with the Communist Party and they have accepted Pope Francis and the Catholic Church. They've been killing Catholics for 500 years in China. Japan started accepting Catholics 400 years ago. So because they did accept Catholics, there's, there's movies made about how the Japanese hate Catholics. But China's been killing Catholics during different periods for five years. 100 years, and they still do. And for the first time ever, the huge underground church is being told, we want you to make contact with us, tell us what you're doing, because we're going to make it okay, because the new Catholic church is communism. This guy is a communist. He was a communist in South America who also helped round up communists that weren't following orders, the grassroots, and kill them. He's known for rounding up priests and villagers by the thousands and killing them. So he's worse than a communist. He's a globalist controller who manages the communist slave farms. Remember Obama went to South America and said, you'll have communism in your country, mega banks will be private, and then they'll come in and work with you, meaning gang rape you. But it's okay because Obama said it. Can't have air conditioning, can't have cars. It's okay, he said it. The elites will be rich, you will have nothing, but I'm black. Yes, sir, yes, sir. That doesn't sound racist or classist at all. So... That's coming up. I want to play a few more minutes of Trump, and we've got Colbert attacking me, saying I'm like a guy, you know, on steroids and peyote, because they can take clips, and there's a clip they play where they go, I'm anti-gay. Or anti-gay. Of course, I really said I'm not anti-gay. But, and, and he goes, oh, we're not cutting these clips up, so to show you, here's some more, a bunch of real quick clips out of context. So we're going to analyze this propaganda and go over it. So just like they made fun, and I said, Hillary clearly didn't open the pickle jar. It didn't pop. Everybody did it themselves and said, yeah, she's a liar. And then Kimmel had to say, okay, Alex Jones is right. It's true. But I knew they'd take the bait on the pickles. Just like J-Lo, I knew it'd be in hundreds of publications. It was in more than that. It was all over the nightly news, you name it. I said, if she loves bringing in Somalis with her radical Islamic faith there, is even beyond orthodox. It's very radical. Where they just say women are animals, rape them all you want, even if they're hooded. They have no rights. And I said, if she loves that so much, she should go be amongst the Somalis where women, literally, you don't even see them on the streets. They are total slaves, total failed culture, total just nightmare society, beyond road warrior, beyond anything you've seen in fiction. I mean, it's hell on earth. Absolute hell on earth. Women are still sold on slave blocks. They're still sold up on the big slave stages. That's on record. Look it up. I'm going to do whole reports on it. But then alt-right host thought it was okay to gang rape on Jennifer Bullock. So, so see, the vibe and everybody else trying to manipulate people in the inner city said, Alex Jones wants to rape J-Lo. And they show some really short clip of me saying, she needs to get gang raped. No, I said, if she loves that and wants us to get gang raped and wants to bring that here and then defend it and cover it up like Europe has done in Sweden and everywhere else coming out in the news, then she should go there if gang raping's so great. If she wants to bring the gang raping here, I'm clearly speaking out against rape. 
I'm clearly saying it's wrong, it's bad, but I knew they'd take it and misrepresent it. And then I know we're bigger than they are in many cases. So those people will come here and find the truth of what I said and they're further discredited. That's how they operate. When everyone knows we've been at the tip of the spear trying to fight Islam, abusing women, and the gang raping going on all over the world. But we become, through their alchemy of baloney, the alchemy of BS, we become the gang rapers. So that's all coming up. But first, why Trump is dominating, why he's so important, and why now it's unbelievable to see the real deal actually unfolding and the incredible C pack speech he gave today and how to bring down globalism. I'm going to say it all and you cover it all today. Then to Colbert's BS, uh, we're going to hit it all. But before I do that, in the ongoing civil war, I, I want to explain to some of the new listeners how this works. We didn't have sponsors that we had pull from us. That's the normal thing, trying to go after your sponsors or boycott you. We had AdRoll, that's the exclusive advertising dealer of Google. So the, Google didn't have the liability. In my view, it's a front company of Google. That's basically admitted in the trade publications. They came out on Monday and said, you no longer have a right to advertise in the internet market through Google. You understand? That's saying, I can't go. Like, if I showed up at Dick's Sporting Goods, said I wanted to buy some golf clubs, they said, sorry, you're a conservative, or you're white, or you're black, or you're whatever. You know, you're Jewish, you, you're whatever. You can't buy golf clubs. It's the same thing. It, it, it's not that we even violated the terms. It was milk toast ads, you know, ads for supplements and things. They said, you are fake news. You are involved in politics. That's not allowed. Well, but then they take political advertising. They're saying someone in the federal election commission said Alex Jones isn't allowed to operate. Well, give me the letter. Let me have my day in court. Let me know who to sue. Well, you won't tell me, so I know who I got to. So that's more stuff I got to do, but okay. I'm going to sit there and just hope it goes away, Ad Roll. The word is everybody else is scared. A bunch of other people got banned, but they're trying to work it out with Ad Roll. And what can we do, Ad Roll? How can we kiss your butt, Ad Roll? How can we? No, no. You want to racketeer on us, in my opinion, in my view, what this appears to be? Fine. You want litigation, I guess we'll have to do it. But here's the issue. We made $3.3 million last year to fund the operation. Not profit, but money that made to fund our operation. Advertising our products outside of our own sphere and show. Okay? Because we want to reach other people. That's what we're doing. And they came in and they said, you can't do that anymore after three years, almost three years. And so now I'm sitting here looking at this happening, and, I, and we projected the graph because it, it, it takes time to build these up and figure out where to advertise and how it works. And a lot of work went into this and a lot of money we paid them. They pull the rug up after a three-year relationship and say, bye-bye. And then put a false name on us and claim we don't exist and we're bad, disreputable people with no proof. Well, that's libelous. That's slander. That's defamation. I mean... The Washington Post had to pull their big list they everybody's using two months ago, admitting they don't know where they got it. Well, it was just made up and we know by who, Democratic Party. So the Democratic Party wants to ban political voices or just free speech in this country or free speech groups who have separate businesses that fund their speech. You're going to discriminate against that. I mean, you are in so much trouble politically, culturally, you name it, ad roll. But then we brought in about a million for the last four days. That's gross, though. That you know, We discount our products so much that that's only $500,000. And I'm not bitching. That's great. Thank you, audience. It's wonderful. Most other shows couldn't do anything like that. We sell products discounted. They're high quality. You get them. Thank you for the support. It, so it's a victory. I've got to make this up with other fundraisers over the next year. You know, the money we made last year from it's budgeted. It just it happens to be but just about the extra money we had for expansion. So it, it's a chilling effect of our free speech and of what we're trying to do, not letting us enter the market. Just like for a decade, we fought this. We don't sell guns, but we fought it. Uh, you've, you've got gun dealers, major gun shops, then sporting goods stores. First, it was little small gun dealers out of, you know, mom and pop outfits, but, you know, out of little storefronts. They banned those in most magazines, TV ads, radio ads, did it a lot of places. Newspapers all got together and banned those. That was about 15, 20 years ago. I mean, everybody remembers that. And then next, it was sporting goods stores. And then they just said, no guns advertised, period, anywhere. Okay? Now, some magazines would say, oh, well, we'll, we'll take an insert and still do it and get around that because people file lawsuits. So they're blocking your access to the market. It's racketeering. It's like block, blocking little black kids from going into the school in Alabama uh, or uh, places like uh, Arkansas in 1959. You know, Same deal. Same deal. You're saying you're not allowed in this restaurant. You're not allowed at this train station. You don't get service at this hotel. Get out of here.
not that, oh, your ads violate our rules. You, your website is political and you're not allowed to make money. Go in the corner and die. You can't have a job. Can you imagine what they'll do once they have total digital control and no cash anymore? The big grand thing is to get rid of cash and track everything you do because they can tax you, track you, and turn you off. This is the mark of the beast. And Zuckerberg in his new report that came out said that. They want Chinese-style controls through a web censorship system and a web ID and web taxes and a web social score that corporations and governments, like a no-fly list, just magically make behind closed doors, and it just becomes a trashy social score off the side of your head, digitally, when they face scan you. With a bunch of made-up crap they threw into your file just for fun. Do we as a culture and humanity think that's a good idea? No, we're going to reject that, just like we're rejecting globalism all over the world. And we're going to reject Hillary Clinton. The elite were so stupid, they thought that they could just put a walking, crazy, evil-looking corpse with all these crimes behind her, with Bill like another zombie, with all their corruption and the arrogant, crazy Pelosi not knowing what planet she's on, and force feed us that. That's why internal poll numbers showed 25% of blacks voting for Trump, almost 40% of Hispanics. Primary numbers showed more than that. But they stole a bunch of states and they manipulated the demographics because they were even more scared, not just of Trump winning, but of the fact that if Hispanics and blacks ever talk to each other and find out they actually voted for Trump, then the whole paradigm shifts of the bullying and the intimidation to go along with it. And then it's total collapse for the new world order. Then you hear that whole C CPAC speech we just heard part of. You know, he's not just saying we're going to cut taxes and, and bring jobs back and and. He's saying, well, we're going to have coal. We're going to have oil. We're going to develop. He's saying, we're open for business to all the multinationals who are already greedy and self-serving. They just manipulate things together. The fact that he's saying that means we're open and it makes us competitive. So they all come back, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why the stock market goes up. That's why it's all exploding. Because the United States was already set up to dominate the future. And it was sold out to other special interests. And now we've gotten control of the country back. And that's why they've got the CIA and the FBI and all these agencies saying, we're not going to do a word you say, President, because they were already hijackers put in control by the globalists. And so you're in the middle of a giant civil war. But the good news is we have courage. We have honor. We have the truth on our side. And the people are rapidly waking up, and that's why they're in total panic. And Maxine Waters is calling Trump's whole cabinet scumbags because they know they're losing. They're losing. They're arrogant losers. They will fail. Look, I'm not going to sit here and say, see, I told you so, that communist Chinese style net censorship was coming to the web because it's already here. It's being announced. The way you keep the internet open and free is you get involved more than ever. Go to Infowars.com forward slash app. A new battleship in the fight. Infowars Live, available right now. We're looking for a crew to man it. You going to sit down and play games and be a trendy? Or are you going to be part of history? Don't sit by and let the internet and free speech be stolen from you. Take action. <laughs>